Hello everyone and welcome to my Metal Gear Solid 5 The Phantom Paint Review. Uh, this is actually supposed to be a first impressions video that I would have gotten out on the week the game was released, but unfortunately that did not happen, I didn't have enough time for that. Uh, so I figured I would go ahead and just bring you guys an actual review of the game. Now I'm gonna go ahead and go. I'm gonna go ahead and say that I actually have not beat this game yet, but I have. I basically know the entire storyline. Uh, I feel like I can actually do a full review on this game. So hopefully you don't mind that. Now I'm gonna say a few things here before we actually get into this video. The first thing is that if you are new to my channel. Um, I don't make sense a lot. I'll be quite honest. I don't have scripts when I do videos. I have a small script for this one just so I know what I'm talking about. But honestly, sometimes I stumble upon my words. Probably won't even edit those out if I do that. And I, I really don't make sense sometimes. And I repeat things. So just fair warning. But if you do enjoy this video, uh, you can uh, consider subscribing, hopefully, if you do enjoy this review. Hopefully you do. Uh, but yeah, I just wanted to get that out of the way. And of course, that I have not beat this game yet. And the way I do my kind of first impression video slash review is is I split this, the review into three sections. Gameplay, graphics, and story. Actually, it's gameplay, story, and graphics in that order. You know, from most important to least important, which least important is graphics. And of course, I'm going to give a game a rating at the end. Now, I am a really, really, really big Metal Gear Solid fan, so you're going to think my rating at the end is very biased, but... Uh, it's my rating, and I don't judge games. If they have flaws that don't really affect me, I don't really judge the game on those flaws, basically. That's that's one way of saying it. But we're going to go ahead and get into this video. Uh, we're going to start with the gameplay here. Hopefully, this review ends up being good, and hopefully you guys do enjoy this video. So let's go ahead and start off with the gameplay. Now, Metal Gear Solid V, The Phantom Pain, is actually the first ever open-world Metal Gear game. Now, this is... This is big because Metal Gear is a stealth game first, you know, stealth is the biggest part of Metal Gear is being stealthy, sneaking around enemies, taking them out silently, or, or putting them to sleep, tranquilizing them. It's, it's pretty big on stealth. And open world, having an open world makes stealth a lot better. Like, I've had a lot of fun in this game um, so far with the open world because it gives you so much freedom to actually approach different missions. So, if you are a stealthy type of player, you can approach these missions with stealth, you know, just focus on stealth, man, and it's a lot of fun. And if you're also that kind of guy that likes to, I don't know, just go and shoot everything, you can do that too. You are free to approach a mission with either stealth or whatever you want, and that's what's really awesome about having this open world game. And with it being open world, all the missions are kind of like intertwined together. You can go into free roam, actually, and go around and do whatever side ops missions you want as well as go into main missions which is which is pretty cool I'm gonna go ahead and say this game is actually split into two types of different missions you got main missions and side ops side ops are just you know dealing with I uh, know getting new soldiers finding blueprints for guns and stuff like that while main missions actually progress the story and you know you can do these in free roam you can be free roaming around do whatever you want and you can just jump right into a mission which is absolutely awesome but the ability to approach missions with either stealth or whatever is just really awesome to have in this game. And that's why I absolutely love the open world in this game. Now, uh, your base, your, your secondary base operations, I should say, is actually your helicopter. Uh, this is where you're going to access all your missions as well as jump in the free roam or head back to your mother base. As well as customize your weapons and, of course, customize like your emblem and you know how the helicopter looks and stuff like that it's pretty cool and the helicopter uh, will of course drop you off when you choose free roam or a mission or whatever it drops you off and you can even call in this helicopter for air support which is awesome like if you get in a firefight and you need some help you can just call in this helicopter and it'll take everyone out that's pretty cool another big gameplay feature happens to be mother base if you remember in Metal Gear Solid Peace Walker the mother base was where you could uh, build yourself a little bit of an army and send these players you know your, your your soldiers off and that was pretty cool and in this game you actually get to build and explore your own mother base and it serves as basically the the main hub of the game although the helicopter ends up being I think where you'll spend the most of your time in between missions uh, but mother base is absolutely awesome you can stock it with soldiers and stuff like that uh, and you can actually drive through the different um, you know, support or the different uh, bases in the mother base, if you will. And uh, you can do all sorts of stuff there. You know, the research and development is there. The medical and all that stuff is there as well. The mother base is awesome, especially because you can actually approach and, I mean, actually explore it this time, which you could not do in Peace Walker. So that is pretty cool. 
Another big feature is the buddy system. Uh, you can have, actually have buddies that will actually go with you on missions. Some of these actually include D-Horse, which you can use to travel a bit faster throughout the terrain of Afghanistan, which is where this game takes place. Uh, you have Quiet, who is a sniper, who I have not unlocked yet, and I really need to get on that. Uh, she can scout enemies for you as well as take them out with either a tranquilizer rifle or of course an actual sniper rifle that shoots real bullets. That's pretty cool. And of course there's D-Dog which is this freaking like wolf pup that uh, you raise up that you can take on missions. They can also scout out enemies and provide distractions and stuff like that. So I like the buddy system so far from just using the horse. It's, it's very good and it seems very useful once you get uh, some other buddies there as well. Now this game features a lot of weapons in this game and a big part of the mother base is your research and development team which once you develop weapons and items and stuff like that including the Fulton system which is used to actually get soldiers uh, to your mother base. If you find a soldier that has good enough stats in the game you can actually tranquilize this soldier or whatever knock him out and you can Fulton them back to mother base and as well as you can also Fulton weapons like turrets and stuff as well as vehicles once you unlock your full time the higher levels which is awesome but this game features a lot of weapons I haven't unlocked too many so far but the weapons in this game there, there's a lot of them there's a lot of stuff to unlock uh, with the research and development there is absolutely a lot and with this comes more customization like I said earlier you can customize your emblem the color of the helicopter you have all sorts of camo that you can outfit uh, venom snake whip and of course you know you, you can actually develop different versions of a weapon as you go on uh, to add silencers and sights and stuff like that. And then you also unlock actual weapon customization later on, which I have not unlocked yet, which is pretty awesome. But all in all, this game has a lot of content. There is over 150 side op missions, which is just absolutely crazy. And also note that you can actually end up not even being able to do some of these side op missions because, like, I accidentally killed a soldier that I was supposed to extract in a side off mission and actually deleted the mission I had to like kill myself to go back and actually be able to do that mission so keep that in mind but as well as hit 150 uh, side off mission there's also of course the 50 or so main missions which are awesome so you have over 200 missions to do in this game plus free roam as well as dealing with mother base and on top of that you can actually send people in your combat unit out to do different types of ops as well which is just absolutely awesome. This game has a ton of content and I see this game being absolutely replayable for a very very long time. So that's about all I have on the gameplay for this review. Now we're going to move on to story. Now the first thing I want to say about the story is there's less of a focus on it in this game. Most Metal Gear games have featured really, really long and very frequent cutscenes. I'm talking about you, Metal Gear Solid 4 here. This game doesn't really have that many cutscenes in it. A lot of the story is actually mainly found through either dialogue or, th or through cassette tapes. The focus is on the gameplay. And as a Metal Gear Solid fan, this is a little disappointing, but also a very welcome change because the gameplay in Metal Gear Solid 5 The Phantom Pain is some of the best we've seen in a Metal Gear game in a long time. The open world really makes this game a ton of fun and I like that there is more of a focus on gameplay this time around. There's still enough story. I feel there's still enough story through the cassette tapes, through the cutscenes, there are the intro to this game. Uh, it, like I thought Metal Gear Solid 4 and 3 had a great intro, this game's intro beat those two. I, I, I'm not even kidding, the intro to this game was absolutely awesome. Uh, of course, there was some issues with Konami, which people are saying that, of course, the, the real true ending isn't really there. And I'm pretty sure that has to do with Konami and the whole Hideo Kojima uh, stuff that went on. Uh, which does suck, and as I put in my notes, Konami sucks, but that's a whole different type of video. Uh, but this, all I can say about the story in this game, after I like finished reading through it... This story is great. I, I really enjoy the story of this game, especially so far that I've been playing and of course what I've read. I think the story is very good. Of course the whole ending thing that happened with Konami does kind of suck. But overall the story is very good in this game. I do like the more focus on gameplay because the gameplay absolutely shines in this game. It's very, very good. Uh, so that's really all I have to say on the story. And now we're going to move into the last thing that we're going to talk about in this review, which is the graphics. Now, in a game, graphics aren't really that important to me. Uh, but we're going to talk about it anyway. So this game is actually powered by the Fox engine. This is Hideo Kojima Productions is engine, I think. I'm not exactly too sure on that. Uh, but this engine was designed um, for games like PT slash Silent Hills and, of course, Metal Gear Fire the Phantom Pain. And this is a very, very good engine. And I'm going to tell you, <laughs> I'm going to tell you why. When they announced this game, I didn't think it was going to be on last-gen consoles. I, I was like, 
dang, this game looks good. How are they going to get this on last gen consoles? And when they announced this is going to be on PS3 and Xbox 360, I was concerned and very confused because I didn't want to be, I didn't want this to be one of those games where it's hindered by the last generation of consoles. Uh, what I can say is this game truly feels next gen, and I think the only reason it is on last gen consoles because of that box engine. The last generation of consoles have a hard time playing this game, to be quite honest. They, the frame rate will drop in, at, at least from my heard, I have heard, the frame rate is not that best, is not the best on last gen consoles. But the fact that the Fox engine was able to get this game running on, it just shows the absolute scale of this engine. The fact that they went from the PS3 to the PC with this thing and made this game just as big as it is. This game is huge. This game is gigantic. And it is on last gen consoles. It's absolutely amazing. The Fox engine is definitely a really, really good engine. But we're going to go ahead and just talk about, uh, of course, the PS4, PS4 is what I got this game for. Uh, it runs at 1080p 60 frames per second on the PS4, and the graphics are absolutely stunning on the PS4. In terms of uh, slowdown with frame rate, I did notice a few parts where the game did slow down. Not enough to like really like anger me or anything, but uh, it did slow down a couple times during sandstorms, as well as when I got close to a waterfall, which was kind of strange. Could be my PS4, honestly, but that's where I experienced a bit of slowdown. But overall, the PS4 version of this game is absolutely awesome. 1080p 60 frames per second. It looks pretty gorgeous, and I did notice a little bit of texture fade on a couple of characters, like um, on Venom Snake's face, his beard, and like the lower part of his face at one point was like lower textured than what it should have been. Could be my game, could be my PS4, I don't know, but the game overall looks very, very good, and I'm really surprised that it is on last generation consoles. Well, that about sums up my review. Hopefully, I talked about most of the stuff in the game. Hopefully, I made sense throughout this review. Hopefully, I did that, but. I'm going to go ahead and rate this game, and you guys are going to hate me for this probably if you haven't had a good time with this game, but I rate this game a 10 out of 10, I really do, because the way I rate games, I don't rate them, like, if they have flaws that don't really affect me, I, I don't really count them against the game. I have a lot of fun with this game, when I have fun with the game, I'm going to give it a high rating, and I've had a lot of fun with this game, and I love Metal Gear Solid, this game is absolutely awesome, if you have not picked this game up, I highly recommend you go out and pick up Metal Gear Solid 5 The Phantom Pain, you will not regret it. Definitely pick up that Legacy Collection for the PS3 or the HD Collection for the 360 if you want to play through some of the storyline of the other games first. But this game is definitely worth the money. It is a 10 out of 10 in my book. And that's really all I have to say for this review. Hopefully you enjoyed. If you did enjoy this review, be sure to drop a like and or a comment. Uh, if you want to see more video game reviews, let me know. Uh, tell me what I did wrong in this review. Tell me what you liked about this review. Stuff like that. Just let me know down below in the comments. Uh, but I hope you guys enjoyed my Metal Gear Solid 5 The Phantom Pain review. 10 out of 10. This game is an absolute masterpiece in my opinion. I don't know about yours, but I enjoyed it. So anyways, be sure to drop a like and a comment down below. And I will see you guys in my next video.